Fat tax, Wikipedia audio. A fat tax is a tax or surcharge that is placed upon fattening food, beverages, or on overweight individuals. It is considered an example of Pigovian taxation. A fat tax aims to discourage unhealthy diets and offset the economic costs of obesity. A fat tax aims to decrease the consumption of foods that are linked to obesity. A related idea is to tax foods that are linked to increased risk of coronary heart disease. Numerous studies suggest that as the price of a food decreases, individuals get fatter. In fact, eating behavior may be more responsive to price increases than to nutritional education. Estimates suggest that a one cent per ounce tax on sugar-sweetened beverages may reduce the consumption of those beverages by 25 percent. However, there is also evidence that obese individuals are less responsive to changes in the price of food than normal weight individuals. To implement a fat tax, it is necessary to specify which food and beverage products will be targeted. This must be done with care, because a carelessly chosen food tax can have surprising and perverse effects. For instance, consumption patterns suggest that taxing saturated fat would induce consumers to increase their salt intake, thereby putting themselves at greater risk for cardiovascular death. Taxation of sodium has been proposed as a way of reducing salt intake and resulting health problems. Current proposals frequently single out sugar-sweetened drinks as a target for taxation. Cross-sectional, prospective, and experimental studies have found an association between obesity and the consumption of sugar-sweetened drinks. However, experimental studies have not always found an association, and the size of the effect can be very modest. Benefits of a fat tax since the poor spend a greater proportion of their income on food, a fat tax might be regressive. Taxing foods that provide primarily calories, with little other nutritional value reduces this problem, since calories are readily available from many sources in diet of industrialized nations. To make a fat tax less burdensome for the poor, Proponents recommend earmarking the revenues to subsidize healthy foods and health education. Additionally, proponents have argued that the fat tax is less regressive to the extent that it lowers medical expenditures and expenditures on the targeted foods among the poor. Indeed, there is a higher incidence of diet-related illnesses among the poor than in the general population. Unlike placing restrictions on foods or ingredients, a fat tax would not limit consumer choice, only change relative prices. Public health practitioners and scholars in a range of different countries have called for a fat tax on unhealthy foods. The reasoning behind implementing a fat tax is the hope that people will avoid risky dietary behaviors, improving health outcomes in society. Research indicates that the current obesity epidemic is increasing as a result of the fast food industry expanding. Junk food outlets are changing the dietary habits of society, pushing out traditional restaurants and leading to the detrimental health effects of obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. Taxes on tobacco have seen smoking rates decrease and as a result there have been calls for fat taxes to be implemented in more countries in an attempt to reduce the consumption of unhealthy foods. In 1942, U.S. physiologist A.J. Carlson suggested levying a fee on each pound of overweight, both to counter an injurious luxury and to make more food available for the war effort. The concept was reintroduced by Milton Merriweather and P. Franklin Alexander in the late 1970s, but became well known in the early 1980s by Kelly D. Brownell, director of the Rudd Center for Food Policy and Obesity at Yale. 
Brownell proposed that revenue from junk food taxes be used to subsidize more healthful foods and fund nutrition campaigns. In a 1994 op-ed in the New York Times, Brownell noted that food costs were out of balance, with healthy foods costing more than unhealthy ones. The New York Times op-ed piece that proposed the fat tax elicited controversy and outrage nationwide. Author Kelly Brownell became the focal point of this controversy, especially from Rush Limbaugh, who spoke out adamantly against the tax and the general principle of governmental intrusion into food choices and a possible invasion of privacy. Brownell's proposal was listed as number seven on the list of U.S. News and World Report's 16 Smart Ideas to Fix the World. Because of this and other work, Brownell was named by Time magazine as one of the world's most influential people. In 2000 a paper in the British Medical Journal outlined the potential impact on deaths from ischemic heart disease of attacks on the main sources of saturated fats. In December 2003, the World Health Organization proposed that nations consider taxing junk foods to encourage people to make healthier food choices. According to the WHO report, several countries use fiscal measures to promote availability of and access to certain foods, others use taxes to increase or decrease consumption of food, and some use public funds and subsidies to promote access among poor communities to recreational and sporting facilities. Bruce Silverglade, Director of Legal Affairs for the Center for Science in the Public Interest, said his non-profit nutrition advocacy organization welcomed the recommendations and has spent years fighting for measures like a junk food tax. The proposal got more traction when New York Assemblyman Felix Ortiz proposed taxes on junk food and entertainment contributing to sedentary lifestyles to fund nutrition and exercise programs. It should also be remembered that taxing foodstuffs is not an argument for increasing taxation. Other taxes can be reduced commensurately if the overall objective is to keep the tax take neutral. The fat tax is an argument for raising taxes on activities that we prefer to discourage rather than raising taxes on socially desirable activities. Therefore, Opponents of this type of taxation must identify which taxes are preferable to taxing these foodstuffs. Other advocates of the tax, such as Jonathan Gruber point to the effect taxes have had on alcohol and tobacco use. Five studies published between 1981 and 1998 found that drinking declined as the price of alcohol increased. The same holds for tobacco. In California in 1988, Proposition 99 increased the state tax by 25 cents per cigarette pack and allocated a minimum of 20% of revenue to fund anti-tobacco education. From 1988 to 1993, the state saw tobacco use decline by 27%, three times better than the U.S. average. A CBS News poll from January 2010 reported that a tax on items such as soft drinks and foods considered to be junk food, is opposed 60% to 38%. An even larger number, 72% of Americans, also believed that a tax would not actually help people lose weight. However, the question of whether or not taxation influences diet is an empirical question and not simply a matter of public opinion. While a February 2010 poll by the Quinnipiac University Polling Institute found that New York City residents overwhelmingly favor a soft drink tax, with 76% wanting the tax, and 22% opposing it. The poll found both Republicans and Democrats favor the tax. In October 2011, British Prime Minister David Cameron told reporters that his government might introduce a fat tax as part of the solution to Britain's obesity problem. 
history. Japan implemented the Metabo law which included the measurement of waist sizes in 2008 in an attempt to overcome increasing obesity rates. The New York Times wrote, to reach its goals of shrinking the overweight population by 10% over the next four years and 25% over the next seven years, the government will impose financial penalties on companies and local governments that fail to meet specific targets. The country's Ministry of Health argues that the campaign will keep the spread of diseases like diabetes and strokes in check. The Metabo law involved conducting an annual waste measurement check of people aged between 40 and 75, which was administered by employers and local government. The role of employers and local government was to ensure there was a minimum of 65% participation with the goal to decrease Japan's obesity rates by 25% by 2015 and failure to meet these goals results in a fine. In October 2011, Denmark introduced a fat tax on butter, milk, cheese, pizza, meat, oil, and processed food if the item contains more than 2.3% saturated fat. However, in November 2012, the Danish tax ministry announced it would abolish the fat tax, stating that it failed to change Danes' eating habits, had encouraged cross-border trading, put Danish jobs at risk and had been a bureaucratic nightmare for producers and outlets. The failure of Denmark's fat tax was also due to financial reasons with politicians identifying the fat tax as a funding source for the government, rather than a health initiative that attempted to improve the health outcomes of society. The proposed sugar tax plans were also scrapped. Met Jerskov, the Danish Minister of Food, Agriculture and Fisheries, stated that the fat tax is one of the most criticized we had in a long time. Now we have to try to improve public health by other means. Although the tax resulted in an additional $216 million in revenue, it also led to numerous complaints from Danish retailers that their customers were taking their business to other countries, such as Sweden and Germany, to take advantage of their lower prices. In the Indian state of Kerala which is ruled by CPI, as a part of June 2016 budgets, the government proposed a 14.5% fat tax on burgers, pizzas and other junk food served in branded restaurants which officials from the quick service industry termed as detrimental to consumption. Industry estimates suggest there are 50 to 75 outlets of organized fast food restaurant chains in Kerala, including global brands McDonald's, Chicken, Burger King, Pizza Hut, Domino's Pizza and Subway. Kerala is the first state in India to introduce a fat tax on burgers, pizzas, donuts and tacos served in branded restaurants. Japan Denmark India